All right, so on these, we're just going backwards, right? All right, so watch me on number four. We take this number back over to the right side. So it'd be log base four of 64 equals three. So that's how you go from exponent form back into log form. All right, so you guys do five and six the same way, then we'll do some problems where we gotta solve. All right, Harlan, number five, how do I write it in log form? Um, log three. Log base three. Good job. All right, Jacob, number six. All right, so one through six, just changing from one form into another is very easy. All right, so now we're going to solve some equations. Everybody good on four, five, and six? Just tell me when you got them, Hayes. All right, so now write down these four. We're going to start off really easy, then we'll do some that are a little bit hard. These guys in class are shorter. We were on the pep rally schedule today. We get out of here at 1049. So if you got first lunch, you're eating lunch at 1050 today, 1055. Anybody need a calculator? Pass this to Jerry. Pass that to Anthony. We'll get you there. We're going to use these older calculators for a couple weeks because the graphing calculators, you just punch this straight in and does it for you. So that's not going to help. I'm not going to learn anything that way. All right, y'all got a copy? All right, look at number seven. We'll do seven first. First step, you gotta write this as an exponent problem just like we did on one, two, and three. So it'll be six to the x power equals 1296. Okay, now we did some work on this the other day. We've gotta make this base the same as this base. So it'll be six to the x equals six to the fourth. Now how did I know that was six to the fourth? Well, you could use your calculator, or you could look up here on the board. I've got a lot of exponents up here for you. Save you some time. All right, so what's the answer going to be on number seven? Mark out the sixes once you make them the same. Answer is x equals four. All right, first step, I wrote it as an exponent problem. We good there? Okay, then I changed. 1296 into 6 to the 4th because I've got to make this base the same as this base. Got to make them the same. How do you know that 1296 is a thing of 6? Okay, I promise you everyone I give you is going to be an exponent of that base. Okay. So you can either look up here or you can do it on your calculator. Okay. All right, so number 8, same thing. Who can set it up for us? Number 8, anybody? 7 to the x power equals 1 over 49, right? Now, we solved ones like this the other day. I forget which day we did it. Monday, Tuesday. 49 changes into 7 squared. Does everybody agree with that? So you've got to make them the same number, right? Okay, well, once you do that, now, Matthew, I can't have a fraction either. Y'all remember how we fixed the fraction? Good. Move it from the bottom to the top, and when you move it, it makes 7 to the second into 7 to the negative 2. So you've got to move it. You can't have a fraction. Now, what's your answer going to be? 
Mark out sevens. Answer is x equals negative 2. Now, I don't care if y'all skip a step, but at least show me one step on this. Alright, let's go to 9. First step, you got to set it up as an exponent problem. Go. Alright, so it's going to be 8 to the x power equals 16. That's just memorizing how to go from log form into exponent form. Alright, and I think we did this same problem the other day. Um, I got to do something a little bit different on this one. You got to break both of them down. How do you know? Because you can't do 8 to some power and get 16, right? So I got to break 8 down and 16 down. To make it easy on you, just look up on the board. Where is 8 and 16 at? Which column? Here's 8. It's 2 to the third. Here's 16. It's 2 to the fourth. So 8 becomes 2 to the third. Leave the x up there. 16 becomes 2 to the fourth. Now work it out and get an answer. So I mark out my twos. I got 3x equals 4. Divide by 3, I got 4 thirds on that one. All right, you should be able to do number 10. Try it. All right, see what you got. You got 2 to the x equals 32, right? Got to make them the same number. So 32 changes into 2 to the fifth. So I got 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. Mark them out. The answer is 5. All right, so those are basically the easy ones. All right, they're going to get a little bit harder now. Everybody good? All right. Copy down 11 and 12. That wasn't supposed to be there. Copy 11 and 12. Now, you actually know it. All right, so 11, set it up. We got 4 to the x equals 128, right? All right, so can I do it this way? Can I turn that into 4 to some power? Let's check. Nope. Look, there is no 4 to something that gives you 128. What does that mean? You got to do them both. So look for 128 and 4 up here. Well, look, we know what we can break 4 down into, or you should know. That's 2 squared, which means this side's got to be 2 to some power. What is it? There it is. 2 to the 7. What's your answer? 7, seven over 2. All right, we're good. Y'all can do it in fewer steps. That's fine. Just show me one step. All right, 12, I left off the equal sign on purpose because you're going to have some where they don't have an equal sign. If you don't have an equal sign, it's automatically equals x every time. All right, now work it out. This one looks... Difficult, it's really going to be extremely easy. Set it up, see what you get. All right, I got 9 to the x equals 9 to the 6. What's your answer? X is, yeah, x equals 6. All right, write down these four. They're going to be a little bit different. All right, so first step, let's set it up. How are we going to set this one up? Good, Matthew, a to the negative second equals 36. All right, you need to write that step down. Now, we have got to get an answer on this. To solve this equation, we have got to get a by itself. You guys agree? All right, so all four of these are the same type. The x, or in this case, the a is in this spot as your subscript. Before, the a was in, I mean, yeah, the x was over here. So when it's like this, if you want this part right here to cancel out, which is what's got to happen, we're going to multiply that by the reciprocal. What does that mean? Flip it. So, Matthew, if that is negative 2 over 1, the reciprocal would be negative 1 over 2, and it would cancel all that and just give you an A. But if I do it here, I've got to do it here too. So to find your answer for this problem, take your calculator, type in 36 to the negative 1 half power, that will give you the answer. Now, if you don't know where the exponent button is on this calculator, I'll come show you. you should. 
All right, so I got 36 exponent negative 1 half. What'd y'all get? I got 1 over 6. All right, so really that's a, what, two-step problem? And that's how you're going to do these for me. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal on your exponent. And whatever you do on one side, you've got to do on the other. We'll work on 14 next. Any question on 13? All right, look at 14. I'm going to set it up. That would be x to the 1 3rd equals 15,625 to the 1 6th. So write it down first as an exponent problem. I'll let you write it. Okay? Now, I want to get the x by itself. That means I've got to multiply by what? Instead of 1 over 3, I flip it. 3 over 1. It cancels all that out and gives you x. But if I do it on the left side, I've got to do it on the right side too. All right? A couple different ways you could do this from here. If you want to type this whole thing in, that's fine. Just put parentheses there and type it in and give you the answer. There is a faster way. What's 3 over 1 times 1 over 6? Somebody time it. 3 times 1 over 6. You can just times your exponent. What's that give you? 1 half. So if you just want to type in 15,625 to the 1 half, that would work too. Either way, you're going to get what? Do I need to type it in? Somebody said 125. Check that. Make sure you get 125. If you don't, let me know. We'll look at it. Go ahead. If you do it that way, Leanna, I would have parentheses around the 1 sixth and the 15 6 25 with the 3 outside the parentheses. And then it should work. Is it to the power of 3? Yes, that is to the power of 3. That is the power of 1 sixth. Okay, so you're not no, but since both of these are powers, you can times it. That'll give you one half, and then just type that in. Either way, it's going to give you the same answer. All right, so y'all should be able to do 15. 16, you may need some help on, do 15. Set it up. All right, 15 is going to be x to the third equals 729. What do I do? Flip it. That's a 3 over 1. Reciprocal would be one third, and if I do it there, I got to do it there. Type in 729 to the one third, you get? No. Nine? Everybody agrees with nine. Sorry, right, Jay. All right, let's go to 16. All right, watch me on 16. I think we did this the other day. It's going to be x to the one fourth equals 11 to the one half. All right, so where did I get one half? This is what we went over the other day. Good. Since this is a square root, that is an understood 2. And this is an understood 1 is your exponent. So when I bring it down, I just write 1 over 2. Now you need to do that. I don't even guess you had to do that, but that's good to know. You could have done it in the calculator without doing the 1 half step, but it's okay. All right, so now what do I times each side by on this one for the exponent? Yeah, instead of 1 fourth, flip it. You do 4 over 1 there. 4 over 1 there. So we got x equals, type it in, 11 to the 1 half. If you want to, you can go ahead and times 1 half times 4. That would just give you 11 squared. And I can do that one in my head. That's 121. Either way, you should get 121. All right, we got four more on these notes. What a problem. 6 to the negative third equals x. We agree with that. That's just basic setting it up. Now, what's going to make this one the easiest type? Because now the x is in this spot when it's the first time we've had one like this. This one's easy because the x is already by itself. You agree? Which means I don't have to do anything. I can just type in 6 to the negative third in my calculator. And make it a fraction. Don't make it a decimal. Type it in and see what you get. 6 to the negative third is 1 over 2 16. All right.
right, 18 is going to be the same way. Set it up, put it in your calculator. If the X is already by itself on one. All right, 4 to the negative 4th equals X. What did y'all get on that one? 256. Okay. All right, two more. Y'all ready? Copy these down. All right, so this is going to be 10 to the x equals 0 0.0001. All right, now, we have to make this decimal a fraction. Normally, you can type it straight into your calculator, hit the arrow button in the bottom right-hand corner, it will make it a fraction. So let's try that. 0 0.0001 equals, and hit your arrow button bottom right hand corner. All right, this one does not change it because the decimal is so big. Most of the time it will. On 20 it will. So we've got to figure out, is this one going to be 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 10,000? Guys, I don't have any shortcut. We're just going to type it in until we find out which one works. 1 divided by 10. No, 1 divided by 100. Nope, but I'm getting closer. I think it's 1 divided by 10,000. Yep, that's it. Don't you just have a zero? Well, there's only three zeros, and there's four zeros here. It won't work. It won't work doing it. And I thought you said it was 1 over 1,000. No, it's 1 over 10,000. I, I had to type it in the calculator. I wish there was a better way. 1 over 10,000. Yep. All right, for the, sh uh, for the shortcut way, this is what y'all learned back in elementary school and middle school. Count your numbers on the right side of the decimal. Four, that's how many zeros are going to be on the bottom. That will work. All right, so now we should be able to work it out. All right, ready? 10 to the X equals 1 over 10 to the 4th. Wait a minute, how did I change that? How, how do I know it was going to be 10 to the 4th? Count your, now that's where you count your zeros. So it's 10 to the 4th. Now from here, you should know what the answer is. If you want to skip a step, what's the answer? Watch. What happens with 10 to the 4th when I move it up? There you go. So it's 10 to the x equals 10 to the negative 4. Mark them out. Your answer is negative 4 on that one. All right, so that one was a bit longer. Try 20. It's just like 19.